Happy Monday. Happy Monday. How are you? I'm good. How are you? How was your weekend? <sighs> Busy, but great. I did so much grocery shopping to start Whole30 today. Mm. My favorite thing to do. <laughs> I love grocery shopping by myself. So I just like got to go up and down all the aisles and like take my time. And it was wonderful. And I had so many groceries and I was just like, my cart is so healthy. I felt so good about myself. So stepping into this new month, thriving already. I'm really proud of you. Feeling good. Feeling great. I'm on the opposite track. So yeah. I, I'm i not thriving on Whole30 so far. It's been one day. Nicole, it's been literally like <laughs> six hours <laughs> to be fair to be fair i haven't had time to do any meal prep and yeah. so i'm struggling because i just i this is something that you need to plan for and yeah. you need time yeah. to plan your meals and i don't have that luxury right now yeah. and so i am mad <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely not easy when you don't have what you need like the biggest thing for whole 30 is you do you have to plan and like I like to treat day one of Whole30 as like basically everything is made the day before. So for everyone listening, I'm a big Whole30 fan. I do Whole30 a couple times a year. It's just a really nice reset. And I know some people don't subscribe to elimination diets. But for me, I like Whole30 because I do not like counting calories. It's mm-hmm. like... I, I hate it. Mm-hmm. I hate being like, I get to like five o'clock and I'm like, well, I've had all my calories t- for the day. So like what I can't eat anymore. Yeah. Um, that is, does just does not work for me. And I like with whole 30 that like I have rules to follow of like what I can and can't eat, but I can eat as much of it as I want. Mm-hmm. Like I can, I can eat all day. I can eat quantity as much, like as much quantity as I want, uh, but just like of the right things. So like mm-hmm. it, that work, it works really well for me. And I know that some people that um, does not work well for, but I have struggled in the past with trigger warning, disordered eating in terms of counting calories and not eating enough mm-hmm. amount wise. Uh, and like very much making myself like not eat more than, you know, a certain number of calories. Yeah. So that has just like never really been my yeah. vibe. Um, I've tried to like dip my toe back into that in like a healthy way, but it's just like not not very good for me. So Whole30 yeah. is better. But so as I'm talking about this, just know that like this is something that I do more for health wise because I just like like how it makes me feel and it's like a nice little reset. But I like yeah. the concept. I like the concept. I don't like the fact that you can't eat beans. Like I feel like that's something that just like doesn't really <laughs> feel right in this. Yeah. Um, also, it's because I'm- a lot like the whole like the concept of Whole30 and the way it was like the reasoning why it was created was like there are people that were having health issues like indigestion or bloating or reactions to things and so it was more of the concept and if you do it hardcore like the people that like created it basically like a low FODMAP yeah it's like you eliminate everything that could cause health problems Mm -hmm. and then once you the 30 days are up it basically like brings your body down to net zero like Mm -hmm. clean slate and then from there you're supposed to do like reintroduction so like for the first week you keep eating whole 30 but you reintroduce beans because beans can be really inflammatory for people so like that can cause like skin issues or hair issues or stomach issues whatever so you do all whole 30 and then you reintroduce beans and then you see kind of how your body reacts and the next week you go back to all whole 30 eliminate beans again and then you re-add in dairy Mm -hmm. and you see how your body reacts to that so it's more just like see it's it basically takes you down to zero so then as you reintroduce you figure out what it is that is causing your body problems yeah um i'm just i don't do the reintroduction that well um because i'm just like okay it's been 30 days and i usually just take the meals that i like and i try to continue it on like holistically Mm -hmm. um but I also am in denial because I'm pretty sure it's um like the grains that does it for me. That's my problem. And I'm just like never going to not do that. And so as long as it's not like a dire health problem, like I'm never going to do that. I'm yeah. not going to eliminate that for my whole life. But it's nice for like a month to like get myself down. And then I like cut the cravings for it mm-hmm. so that I'm not like eating bread for every single meal. Mm-hmm because I've done 30 days of not. So it's like easier because I just feel like after a while I like fall off the wagon and I'm just like bread for every 
piece of every meal. Well, imagine how I imagine imagine how I'm gonna feel. Yeah, with Carly baking a loaf of bread every single day. I could never. I could so. never. I'd have to move out for the month. So, um, but yeah, I think, and I think that you obviously have extenuating circumstances that are not helping you this week but that's why I usually take like the first like three to four days of Whole30 are like my favorite meals easy meals Mm -hmm. and like I have everything really prepped so that like as I'm going through it I don't have to think about it every day that's that's the worst when you start thinking about it (laughs) and I think that's my problem when I've like tried these things in in the past is that Obviously, as someone who's been recently diagnosed with ADHD, I am not someone who really sticks to your routine ever. And so mm-hmm. it's very hard for me to be like, okay, I'm going to do this for the next 30 days. I'm like, yeah. what if I don't want to? Yeah. <laughs> and you know me, I'm like a routine junkie. Yeah, you love like, a routine. We are so opposite. So opposite. I'm, and that's why I love you so much because you do keep me on a routine and you keep me on a schedule. And I love that so much. <laughs> everyone you force everyone, me to have some fun. Every ADHD bestie needs their type A routine girly. <laughs> I mean, I'm just, uh, yeah, I'm walking into this month very excited because I'm doing Whole30 and I'm starting a new workout program tomorrow. Um, so I just am like, I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. I'm I'll feeling good you. going into this new month. I am surviving going into this new and month. And that's okay. So sometimes we'll, that's we'll check sometimes back Sometimes that's in. good enough. We'll check back in next week. We'll see if things have changed. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed for you. But <laughs> <laughs> it everything feels a little bit prettier for you next week. Well, we have a fun episode today. So first of all, welcome everyone. This is TGNF. An F1 podcast with Kate and Nicole. I'm Kate. I'm Nicole. This is our show. Welcome. And as the name suggests, talk about Formula One racing. But we also talk about other things. Talk about our lives. Talk about things that are going on. Talk about you guys and what's happening with you. So that's today because there wasn't a race this past weekend. And so there is we're going to have fun this today. Weekend, though, not to be confused. Yeah, this past weekend. There was not a race this past weekend. Everyone is was very upset with my wording on Instagram when I said this was not a race week. <laughs> and I meant in terms of a podcaster's sense where like <laughs> there was not a race. In the rear view mirror, there was in not. In the rear view mirror that we would have talked about on this episode. Yeah. So that's where we're at today. I have to tell you, so Kenny's been listening to our podcast. Mm-hmm. He goes, can I be honest? And I said, yeah. And he goes... You, you and Kate have got to stop saying you have nothing to talk about because then you guys talk about for a full hour and a half. And I go, I know it's kind of a running bit, though. It is. <laughs> but today, I will say we do have a lot to talk about. We do have a lot to talk about, even though it's an off week. Even we though have it's a lot to talk week. about today. Yeah. <laughs> so there is a race this weekend, which everyone was very concerned about me knowing, um, which I do. So Don't worry, we, we have the calendar. We got it. Yeah, like I do have an F1 podcast, so I do know when the races are. That's kind of the job description. So Japan is this weekend. We love the Japanese race. Like I, I love this race. Mm-hmm, it's too. at the worst time. It's just it's just worst time for me on the East Coast. Hate it, but <laughs> it is. A very fun race to watch. It's a fun one. Historically, when we have not been doing Whole30, I love to get sushi um, and stay up late and watch a Japanese Grand Prix. It's so, so fun. I highly recommend, I've done this in the past, we have had like a sleepover. Everyone comes over and Mm. we watch a Japanese Grand Prix and just like eat a bunch of sushi and it's very fun. So if you have the opportunity to have a cheeky little girls night, Order sushi, get a bottle of wine, highly recommend. It's a good time. I think this race is just really fun. The track is really exciting. You can tell the drivers love it. Mm-hmm. Yuki, it's Yuki's home race, and obviously we're on our on our Yuki journey right now. Mm-hmm. So that's amazing. The mayor, and- the mayor has returned home. <laughs> and um Another Japanese driver is driving Danny's car for, I think, one of the practice sessions. So they'll be so RB will have two Japanese drivers on the grid oh, so uh, at the Japanese Grand Prix, which I think will just be so fun, like so nice for the local fans. They said, Danny, you don't need to practice. We know where you're going to end up. <laughs> Danny, sit this one out. Brother, <laughs> sit it out. 
You're good. Take a I am, off. Relax. I am excited. And I know <laughs> last year too with Japan, you and I had a lengthy discussion about how Logan was just like on the board of tourism, I think for oh Tokyo. God, yeah. Um, and Williams was like slutting him out. So I'm hopeful that we get another visit Japan campaign that is hosted by Logan Sargent uh, because those Please. photos were just like so iconic last year. Like so fun. I feel like at this time last year, the grid was so much more fun. Like everyone had their .jpg Instagram accounts and like we were getting so much content. Like we were getting so much behind the scenes content from them. And I just feel like we haven't really gotten that this year and I'm feeling like starved for it a little bit. You know? I know. I feel like – we're getting a handful of like reels from the teams, but I'm like, I want the drivers to run their own TikTok accounts. Like I want to see what stupid shit they get up well, to. Well, I heard, and I actually don't know if this is true. Okay. Everything we said. Sprinkle of salt. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sprinkling <laughs> of allegedly is on here. Season it with allegedly. But I heard that because of Drive to Survive, teams oh, yeah. are now – like not allowed to post as much behind the scenes content so like mclaren unboxed i don't think is really allowed to happen anymore like we haven't seen any mm -hmm. c squared challenges like yeah. i think a lot of that stuff is kind of being put the kibosh on because i think they thought that that was leading to people not watching drive to survive mm -hmm. for the behind the scenes stuff so i'm interested to see if that's like i wonder if that's like extending to the drivers too and they're like you can't do as much yeah of this which we haven't gotten crazy. a new youtube video from charles in a while other i know than, like his piano one but like that's super it. annoying on the Mama's part pissed. none of the stuff that they cover in drive to survive is ever anything remotely similar to what they do oh, exactly exactly and I'm, now i'm wondering okay so similarly similarly to this liberty media mm -hmm. just acquired moto gp yep we, four billion dollars or something something like that. Yeah. Asinine. I'm curious to see if we get the same kind of trajectory of MotoGP as we did F1. Mm -hmm. Because you know that I am, I'm trying to be I, every year. You've, you've been saying it. Famously, I've been saying I want to be a MotoGP girly. But they, I've talked about this before too, is that they had a great Drive to Survive-esque yes. show on Amazon. And I loved it. And it was so great. And and all the drivers spoke in their native tongues. Little and subtitles. They had subtitles for them in English. And I just felt like it was like very authentic and really fun. Um, but now I'm wondering, I'm curious to see if now that Liberty has acquired them, because Box to Box is doing all of these Netflix yep. sports shows. So like, do we get a MotoGP one? And then will we get, will they increase behind the scenes stuff that like content that's coming out of teams and then take it away because it's like god giveth god can take it away like <laughs> yeah, i do feel you like think? i feel like that was a strategy of theirs is like give them a lot of behind the scenes to get them really invested and then take it away so that they watch this thing that we're getting paid for or something yeah do you know. think do you think or alternatively that because people are like listen we watch all the races i don't want to see the race previews mm -hmm. or like what happened during the race is like it's boring nothing is really happening do you think that they're taking it on an angle that's more behind the scenes and just like don't blink with carlos um mm. or no breaks with danny like they are doing more of this like really situational content with them that would be interesting because yeah i mean drive to survive this season very boring yeah so they need to they need to figure out like it has, What's they have been copy, plan? copying and pasting. We're going into like the sixth or seventh season now. Like yeah. we have to reinvent the wheel because yeah. it is feeling very flat. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious with this new kind of rule, if that's, if that's what they're gearing up for, which would be great. I'd be very excited. Interesting to see what happens with MotoGP. I feel like we're going to start seeing a lot more of it mm -hmm. and it's going to kind of infiltrate the u.s which is exciting yeah and i'm excited for that something else that i'm extremely excited for but also a little bit mad about 
is that Charles Leclerc is opening an ice cream shop. Obsessed with this, obsessed with the concept. We know he loves ice cream. He's always got these fun, fun little photos of him with ice cream. Mm -hmm. So like so cute. But I'm also pissed because it's in Milan and we were we literally were just, just there. <laughs> and I'm like, you couldn't have done this this time last year, so that we could have gone, especially on our gelato tour of Milan. I know. Where we were yeah, trying we, to have gelato every day. Every day. Every day. Wow, I yes. know. And that one day we were like, we have to have more gelatos <laughs> today than make up for lost time. And we did. And, and we, we did. did. Yeah, those girls, very separate from Whole30 girls. Those <laughs> girls are a very different version but of us. Both us. <laughs> both us. <laughs> because we, we have multitudes. We contain multitudes. However, I when he announced that it was Milan, I was like, of course, because... Why would it not be? Why would I? I personally can't take a third trip to Milan. No. I've had enough time there. I want to go somewhere else. So Milan, yeah. unless unless someone's flying me out to Milan, unless Charles Leclerc's <laughs> ice cream shop Leck is looking bringing for us out for a taste test, a live taste test, and they're gonna fly us out there. We Which that back. would be can that's I'm, dream. That's I'm envisioning dream. I'm envisioning us on our gelato tour and like literally going to this ice cream shop and having to try every single flavor and having just a mukbang. <laughs> a mukbang and having incredibly insightful discourse around the flavor palettes. It's um, like a wine tasting. Like I'm getting yeah. notes of cherry. I'm you know what we should do? Call up Charles Leclerc. <laughs> what if you just Give call him. Taylor up? <laughs> Give him our sweet like sugar description from Ben and Jerry's and be like, make this fucking ice cream flavor, please. Cause we cannot find it anywhere. Do you think he's going to have like fun flavored names? Do you think he's going to do like fun flavors or do we think it's going to be like every other gelateria where it's like stracciatella, vanilla, pistachio, lemon sorbet. Like, it's I, like I want to believe that he would do something fun because I think that he's like a cheesy dad joke kind of guy. But you also know that I think he's very boring. <laughs> yeah. So like, I don't know. It could go either way. It's a 50-50 shot. I know. Of what we're getting out of him. I just, Botez and Lewis really paved the way for, and I guess Danny kind of, but Botez really adventures. is like food adventures and having just an entrepreneurial spirit. Yeah. Um, and I think it's so fun to see them kind of explore these new interests. Mm -hmm. Like I love the idea of being so rich that you can actually just do whatever you want. Like, like no one can tell you no. You, you have, have a dream, dream and you can, and you can just make it happen. Like I would love to own an ice cream shop. It would Economically, be economically is that probably the best thing for me to do right now? Absolutely no. not. But I'd love it. <laughs> but I love it. <laughs> I would love it. I wish but Charles alas. nothing but the best. I, I maybe one day we can franchise a Charles Leclerc ice cream shop, a lek, um, a lick a lek. What? Yeah, a lick of a lek, a live a lick of lek. Is it, do we think that's the slogan? I don't know, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I would be down. <laughs> anyway, Kate and I will be franchisee owners. Um, of you know this what we're gonna do is we're we're gonna franchise. We're going to do um, it's I know a pizza exactly hut. It's, 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 it's a, a combination of <laughs> Pizza Hut and Taco Bell. And it's Charles Ice Cream Shop and Lewis's Vegan Burger Shop. And, okay, but no, what we should do is we should just create a food hall. It's it's Charles's Ice Cream Shop. It's Lewis's Vegan Meat. It's Botaz's Gluten-Free Pizza. It's Danny's Wine. It's Danny's Wine. It's Oath Gin. It's um, Botaz's Espresso. Bar. So basically, it's Valtteri's food hall with guests <laughs> and Valtteri and us. friends food hall, <laughs> Botas and friends. Um, but I think that that's kind of that's really where Yuki. At some point, I know Yuki's gonna have. A I food know he's company. gonna have like a food he's line. having a hundred percent. So like he's our he's gonna be. It's in the inevitable. Mix. It's, it's inevitable. It's not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Exactly. So I think that that's our new business venture. Whenever we decide to hang up the mics. Okay, I think that we also should probably get in contact with F1 Arcade and be mm. like, mm, these kind of go together. So, yeah. like, we could get a giant building, mm. get a giant piece of real estate, food hall on the first floor, mm. F1 Arcade upstairs. Yeah. 
No one steal our idea, okay? No one steal our idea. This is copyrighted. <laughs> Trademark. DM, DM, okay? Don't steal it. Don't steal it, guys. <laughs> don't even think about Everyone stealing Everyone steals it. all of our ideas <laughs> and all of our content anyways, so don't, don't steal this from us. Let us have one thing. One thing. <laughs> I think this is a perfect segue, though, into our next topic, which is Lewis Hamilton on the cover of GQ today just stunning he, i said this in our whatsapp group with our friends but his face defies the laws of nature he's like, so it handsome. is so handsome and like he's drinking the same stuff that paul rudd is drinking because he has not aged a day he just is like he's kind of benjamin buttoning you know you look at photos of him from like 2008 and I'm like, that's an old man with his receding hairline. And then I see him now and I'm like, Benjamin? Mr. Button? Well, what do we always say? You're not ugly. You're, <laughs> You're just, just poor. poor. <laughs> Lewis came into money, reinvented himself. Got some plugs. And now he's very handsome. He's got handsome, a good skincare handsome, routine. Handsome. He can wear the top of the line outfits he's crushing it he but gets think- a facial every day probably yeah, yeah. i'm pissed i wish i could yeah he's got top t- he's got a facialist on probably who travels with him takes care of him it used probably used to be angela he's got someone new now got someone new meanwhile angela is back in the racing circuit she's f2 with marcus erickson right no i don't know why martin? that was the first name martin no, no. marcus something that's why i just said marcus erickson you're right. You did say that. That's incorrect, <laughs> though. Hold on. <laughs> is it Marcus Erickson? No, it's Marcus something. No, I know, but his name is Marcus Armstrong. Marcus Armstrong. I knew it was Marcus. I knew it was Marcus. <laughs> Marcus Erickson's an indie car. Got it. Yes. The reason why I was segueing is because Lewis spends a lot of time talking about how he needs to evolve beyond F1. He needs to build a brand that's bigger than F1 because he spent mm-hmm. a lot of time talking to a lot of the greats and they imparted some wisdom on him that they were like, listen, I either left too soon. I left too late. Like, I don't know what I'm doing with my life because I miss it. I had nothing set up. And yeah. so, right. We regularly talk about the drivers brands outside of the sport here. And I think historically, F1 drivers have not been given that luxury. They've not been given the privilege to be able to build that brand outside of just being a race car driver. So, you know, you have a handful of folks who just became so famous beyond the sport that they were able to, you know, make waves in in other areas. But Mm -hmm. Lewis is very much like, I am going to make sure that I am set up for life after this. I am building brands. He's got his Amalve. He's working on creating movies and TV shows. He's got his fashion line, which I can only imagine is going to grow as he has more time to kind of, once he retires, like put more energy into that. Yeah. And so... I think Lewis has really been like a tastemaker of sorts when it comes to the drivers building their own brands off. Yeah. A couple more things really quickly. I want to talk about F1 Academy and because I just felt like this was like very another example of them, not just talking the talk, but walking the walk in terms of getting more female drivers into motorsports. So this weekend uh, marks the opening round of the Champions of the Future Academy, uh, which is a new global series aimed at increasing female participation in national and international karting competitions, which as we all know, that's that's ground zero. That's like Mm -hmm. step one to getting into something like F1 Academy, Formula 4, Formula 3, Formula 2, Formula 1, all of that is like you starting karting. So this happened this past weekend. Sorry, it's this past weekend. It was one of six races that will happen throughout this year. F1 Academy's Discover Your Drive is supporting three of the female drivers in each of the mixed gender categories uh, accepted in that academy program. So they're sponsoring three drivers in the three uh, categories. So the mini, which is nine to 12 years old. Okay. And junior, 
<laughs> not sure if that's exactly it, but uh, 12 to 14 year olds and OK and senior from 14 to 18. Really exciting that F1 Academy is going to be supporting those drivers. Uh, they'll have branded kits and carts. Uh, and also F1 Academy is going to be covering a third of their budget for the season. Love that. So just exciting to continue to see them doing the work and and really being the driving force for change in, absolutely in more sports so pretty exciting i love to see that kind of mentorship happening you know like you said walk the walk talk the talk yeah we love and to you know it. speaking of mentorship <laughs> i like to think we are somewhat of mentors some might say that we actually give really really good advice so we're introducing a new little segment that maybe we'll do more often if people like it this is called ask tg1f we spend a lot of our time on this podcast crowdsourcing advice from all of you and just kind of the general world mm-hmm. at large. We're like, you know, if anyone knows this, tell us. But we wanted to, you know, give them, Mike, give that opportunity to you all to ask us questions, things that, like a situation you need advice on. It's kind of like those like dear so-and-so old columns yeah. in, in magazines and we newspapers. We are the podcast. We're the Delilahs of yeah. the podcasting world. A lot of people send us questions, which is like very exciting. And we're going to go through them. We've got a ton of questions. So we'll try to get through yeah. as many as we can. In an essence, this is our own girls room because we're the it girls is. and you guys are asking us questions. So welcome to room. the TG1F version of the girls room. The girls room. <laughs> You're the girls this week. <laughs> <laughs> so number one question is, Someone said, work outfits. I am struggling in the return to office era. Girl, are Join we the all? club. Join Aren't the club. Aren't we all? I think, I mean, it's that's hard because I don't know what your office culture is like or like mm-hmm. what the vibe is. Because I just started a new job that's in office. And the first couple of days I went like pretty business casual. I'd gotten an email from my manager saying that people wore jeans um, and like sweaters. Mm-hmm. So that's what I wore. I just kind of like went with that but I just took a look around to see what everyone was wearing and I started seeing that people wore sneakers with like nicer outfits so I don't know I feel like my go-to if I don't know what to wear to the office is I like a nice pair of loose jeans like baggier jeans that are not ripped so like they're still really nice I do a pair of high top converse that are clean and nice uh and then like a sweater or yeah. like a blazer. I like to do like something that's a little more casual and then throw like a blazer or like a nicer sweater on top to dress it up just a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I agree. Usually, I mean, we wear people wear leggings in my office. So mm. <laughs> we're like super casual. It kind of it really runs the gambit. Some yeah. people are in heels and slacks and like it's nice. And then some people are in like an oversized button down and leggings. And so it's like really just kind of all over the place. It's really different, but I'll say most of my outfits for work, I'll shop at like Old Navy or Abercrombie yeah. or Zara. Those Old are kind Navy. of my big three for my work yeah. outfits. Old Navy is incredible. They have, I mean, I've said this on our story before, but they have my favorite jeans right now. Um, the mid-rise. Yeah, wait, trend. you and I both texted each other. We're mid-rise girls Seemingly now. Seemingly kismet. We both discovered on the same day that we think we're mid-rise girlies. After being high-rise for so long, we really so think long. mid-rise, mid-rise is for us. It. Yeah. So, so don't be afraid my... to play around with different jean silhouettes. Yeah, don't be afraid. So I think that's like my go-to for a work outfit is mixing casual and professional. So like casual on the bottom, professional on the top, or professional on the bottom, casual on the top, and kind of like mix and match would be my advice. Yeah. Okay. Next question is, how do I handle things by myself without getting overwhelmed? Once again, I wish I knew. (laughs) I wish I knew. This is a tough question. I think the only one out of the two of us who ever lived by themselves full time. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be a really tricky situation because – You're like, well, I'm the only one who has everything to do. I'm not sure if this person means that they're like seemingly by themselves. They don't have friends or 
family or, a, you know, a partner. I hope that you have people in your life who you can count on. Uh, something for me is that I don't like to ask for help. I'm learning how to be better about that. But that is the one thing that I think will help you from stop being overwhelmed is that you do have people in your life who will help you and they actually want to help you. And you, all you have to do is ask, even if it's very difficult to do so. My biggest tip when I start feeling overwhelmed about things, because I get really overwhelmed by just thinking about all the things I have to do if it's not like written down somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I just have like a notepad or a note on my phone because I usually find it happening before I go to sleep and like I'll have like really bad anxiety before I go to bed and I'm like oh my god I have to do this and this and this and this and this and like this other thing is happening in my life that's stressing me out and I get like so overwhelmed about all the things that have to be done and so I literally just take out my notes app and I just write everything down mm -hmm. and it helps it just like get out of my brain and just getting it out of my head allows my brain to be a little quiet. So I don't know if that would work for anyone, but like that it has been huge for me. This next one, I, I feel like th this is tough because every single one of these, I'm like, wish I knew, but someone wanted to know, how do you find your style? And that is something that you and I have been talking about a lot recently being yeah. like, I want to find my style. I feel like I used to have, I used to have a very clear style Same. and it was like, like I was just like cool in college yeah. like I don't know what it was but I don't know what it was about me but I was <laughs> cool back then and I'm no longer cool and I don't know how that happened so we, I don't really know how to we became 30 <laughs> yeah, I guess that's that yeah is, I think it's tough it. I'll agree I mean I think it's also because you and I when we were younger and I think this is for anyone you're pretty tuned into the trends yeah. Right. And so like, and you have a little bit more disposable income, like at least I did in college because I didn't really have too much to worry about. So all of the money that I earned was really like my disposable income. So I spent a lot on clothes and a lot of like trendy yeah. clothes. And so I had this sense of style that was very me. Yeah. And then I grew up and I was like, okay, I want to buy more like pieces that are going to last me longer mm -hmm. and like that I can wear out. And I think at least for me, People tell me that I have good style, but when I look at myself in the mirror, I look in the closet, I'm like, I have nothing to wear. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's because I've just gone so basic with it, which is not a bad thing. No, like I always know, like I'm like, I can really throw together an outfit in, at any given moment. But I think when you're transitioning out of like being super trendy, you feel like you don't really have this sense of style. I, I would think say like my one tip though that I have found that's worked is having a Pinterest board. And Kate just and like, I have a, a, a join Pinterest board that has like over 800 pins on it. <laughs> that we just are constantly updating with like outfits like, we like. We have had this since 2020. I scroll down and I'm like, some of these are insane that we would ever think about wearing. Like that I just know. goes to show like how, how much trends change, how it changes so rapidly yeah. that you just really have to find things that like fit your body and you like the way you look in yeah. them and that you generally feel confident in. I think my problem sometimes is I'm like, I wear this pair of pants with this shirt every time. And like, I don't really know what else to do. So what I've started to do is I have a new Pinterest board, like that's just mine. And it, I type in things that I have in my closet and I do like light wash, jean, white Converse outfit. Mm -hmm. And I see what comes up and then I'll save a bunch of those to be like, okay, this these are different outfits I can make with this like basic thing that I have or I'll do like knee high white boot outfit mm. and I will see some ideas and I'm like okay I have a sweater like that I have a skirt like that I have like a, I have a blazer that I can do this with so like that's really helpful I think if you're like trying to figure out what your personal style is like find a couple things in your closet that you really like and you feel good in and then use Pinterest to figure out new ways to style it yeah. so it'll feel different and it'll feel just like that extra piece of like put together that it's like okay I'm not just like wearing this thing but I'm styling it yeah. um in a fun way so that's been fun for me all right next question dating an undergrad it's literally so fucking hard to find a regular dude girl yeah <laughs> undergrad is not the place no 
not the no, place. No, you're not, not the place. Yeah. And if you happen to find your husband in undergrad, congratulations. Good for you. <laughs> Buy a lottery ticket. Yeah. Um, undergrad is really not going to be the move. I'll- Everyone is just growing so much and changing and like figuring out who you are away from your family, away from like everything you've grown up around and as that I think it's hard I think that you really start to figure out who you are after graduation and I'll tell you this you are not going to really remember or care about the guys that you liked or dated in college what you are going to remember is all the fun times you had with your friends Mm -hmm. so I would say try and decenter this need to find your person in undergrad and just yeah. have fun with your friends because it you is will the last time in life you that. can like have fun and not have responsibilities really and you will be very sad when you no longer live five feet apart yeah. from some of your favorite people in the world so yeah. really take advantage of that don't worry about dudes or girls whatever you're into um yeah it's it's not worth it it's gonna be it's, it's gonna be so much better once you're out yeah. Okay. This is a fun one. <laughs> this is a good situational need advice. She says, I'm going to formal with a guy, but I've caught feelings for his roommate who is also going, but with another girl. I'm friends with all three of them and truly don't know how this will go. It's a weekend trip and there's only one bed. So my question is, is there only one bed for all four of you or is there only one bed for you and the guy that you're going with and then the other couple has a bed? Like, I'm not sure the logistics of the single bed. So I'm just kind of going to ignore that piece. (laughs) Um, because I'm unsure how we're not adding a bed. wrench into. The I'm place. like, if if there's only one bed total, then you and that other girl should share it and just like <laughs> let the boys sleep. On the let floor. the boys sleep alone. But okay, an interesting scenario. So it, it doesn't sound like you're dating this boy, and it doesn't sound like his roommate is dating that other girl. You're just mm-hmm. kind of like going to formal with them so I don't really know I'm like that's kind of hard I guess yeah I need I need more context because yeah are you friends with the guy you're going to formal with do you know yeah him? she said like, she's friends with all three of them well like how deeply friends yeah like, you know like how ha- were you friends with this guy first and then you happen to you know know his roommate right is it like is it you're going out of convenience like you're like oh yeah. we're friends so I guess we'll go to this formal together yeah. or is he very interested in you and now you've developed feelings for his roommate and I think the thing here is don't put the pressure on formal to be like a decision has to be made at formal and I have to like choose one of the two like we're not in the summer I turn pretty yeah it's giving Jacob Edward like this is not a place where you like need to like make your decision or like the plot is gonna go awry I would say like go to formal see how it goes talk to who you want to talk with dance who you want to dance with and then like gauge the situation after because also like if his roommate is really into this girl and like they're kind of dating then I wouldn't necessarily like push it I don't know but you don't want to I don't I it depends on how you feel about (laughs) the guy you're going with like do you not like him because if you don't like him then I'd go to formal but then I wouldn't like lead him on after that yeah circle back in our dms and give it yeah I need to know more about this we really need we need to know more about this but I would say don't hang don't hang everything on this formal being like you have to have it figured out by then because you don't it's like not it's yeah. not gonna like end your life yeah if you're still struggling with this then yeah crazy weekend trip one bed that part <laughs> like and she she sent us another message like an hour later to say i forgot to say it's a weekend trip and there's only one bed so like i'm like this <laughs> feels like a big part note. of it but note. i don't know anything about it so i need to know more Okay, someone said, this is for you, Nicole. <laughs> Tips on getting over your ex? I'm really missing them right now. Um, Time. I really don't think that there's too, too much you can do other than the time between your breakup and also spending it with really good friends. I am so lucky that I had Kate to be there for me when I broke up with my ex not once, but twice. Um, and, you know, I think it's really just invest in yourself, do things that you want to do, 
it's not the end of the world. You will bounce back. He will never be worth it. Unless he is. I don't know. Maybe not everyone has bad ex-boyfriends like I do. Um, but it's just spend time with yourself. I look back on the time period post breakup with my ex and I grew to love myself so much. Like I miss her. I know she's still with me, but like, I'm like that version of myself was so kind and gentle with my own feelings. And that was just like a really pivotal moment. So yeah, just really take that time to figure out what you want and what you like to do. And also maybe you start a podcast with your best friend that also helps. That That's also a good trick. <laughs> confirmed works. <laughs> a lot of people asked about work life balance, and I think nobody knows how to do work life balance really well. But I think especially just, not us. No, we are working twenty four seven, babe. Twenty four seven. One of the work life balance questions specifically came from a teacher who does a lot of paperwork on her own time. Um, and I'd say. Like if you can set aside like a time period when you're at home that you do that and try to balance it that way. Like obviously you have your school hours from a certain amount of time, but can you have, I spend an hour grading papers or maybe it's at night. Maybe it's like watching TV from like nine to 10 and you're like, I'll grade papers and watch a show that I like Mm -hmm. or something. And I feel like if you can break it up, so it's not just this ongoing vague thing that happens like the whole time you're home. But if you can structure that, maybe that would help. I think the biggest thing is setting boundaries Yeah. because unless you are an emergency room doctor and you are literally saving lives, it's not going to be the end of the world. I don't think those kids who you're grading papers for are going to really notice if it's ready on a Monday or a Tuesday and you just really need to take a break and say it's really not going to be the end of the world and just making sure that you set aside time for yourself couple other work questions that we got. Someone is looking for a new job and the market is shit. She doesn't know what she wants to do. Do we have any ideas? Uh, Do things for fun. You're always going to have a job. It it might be the job you currently have. It might be a job you've had in the past that you don't love and you don't like it. And the market is bad and you're not finding anything. What Nicole is just saying, don't think of work as like your whole life and try to find things that you can do outside of it that are still productive, that make you feel productive Mm -hmm. but you have a lot of fun like this podcast has gotten me through so many bad jobs Mm -hmm. because it's been something that I'm like this is work that I like doing and I'm having fun doing it and so it makes it so much easier to go to a job that you don't necessarily love if you're doing something outside of it that you do love yeah and I also think too especially as women there's a stat that Women only apply for jobs if they meet 100% of their criteria listed in the job description. Meanwhile, men will apply for the job if they meet 40%. I think my point of view on applying for jobs has always been, am I reading the job description? Would I have fun doing that? Would I learn something? And do I think that the skills that I currently have in my toolbox could be transferable to this role? Mm -hmm. What, What am I able to bring to this team that is going to be productive for them. And so I think when you kind of shift your mindset, the world of jobs open opens up yeah. to you because it's like, you just have to be marketable. And how are you selling yourself to this team to be like, you need me? Because mm-hmm. like, look at all of these things that I, I have experience in that are really going to bring a new angle yeah. to this position. Someone else is, they're applying to jobs out of a master's program with no experience outside of academia. And I think that that, is something similar, really similar. We're just like, just do something, do something where you can get skills that can be transferable. Like it sucks because we live in a time where it's like, you need experience to get work, but you need to work to get experience. experience. Um, So it's like really tough. Um, But I would say like when I was getting out of school and I was trying to prepare myself to get a job in PR. And I really wanted to do music PR. That was like my dream. I had done one internship at a entertainment music PR firm. And I really wanted to like work at a record label and and be in their PR department. Obviously, that's not what I ended up doing. But I really wanted to at the time. So what I did was in Connecticut near my school, I looked up every single record store, record 
label, recording studio, like anything that had to do with music. And I just emailed them and was like, can I work for you and do PR for you? Like I will manage your social media. I will pitch you to local outlets. I will try to get you interviews, places, like I'll do anything, but can I work for you for like a hundred dollars a week and just like do anything? And I heard back from a couple guys who had graduated a few years prior and opened a recording studio and they were like, sure, like we'd love to have someone come help with our website and our social media and whatever else. And so I worked there for like a year in college and it was amazing and I had so much fun and I met some great friends and it was something that I then got to take to job interviews after to be like, look what I did. And like, I did this on my own and it was like a huge thing that people loved. Yeah. A couple more work things. I'm trying to like group these now. Someone wants to know, she's applying for a leadership position at her job. Will it change her work friendships? What if she makes a mistake? And what if her friend who is also applying gets it over her? I'd say if it, it might change the dynamics of your friendships, but I don't think it would change them. A lot of my best friends I are like previous managers of mine. True. Yeah, I I don't think it should change unless you become a different person when you become yeah. in that leadership role. Then I can see how they could change. But obviously you're going to have new obligations and new kind of responsibilities. And your work friends should understand that. And mm-hmm. if they're doing their jobs correctly, there should not really be any issues. And if you make a mistake, everyone does. And yeah. so it's fine. And if your friend gets it instead of you. Just like you would hope that they are going to be happy for you if you get it. You should probably be happy for them if they get it. Yeah. And if you're really disappointed that you didn't get it, then I think that that signals that you probably should find your next thing. And like just yeah. start looking for a, a that position that's going to bring you, yeah. bring you that level of joy. Yeah. Someone asked, what to do if you get laid off? Both of us can it. Talk from experience there. And number one thing is first be kind to yourself and take some time to, if you can, if you have the means to relax a little bit, even if it's just a couple days and just enjoy the time of not having to get up and go to work and going for a walk in the middle of the day or like going to the gym in the middle of the day or going out to eat and going to a coffee shop whenever you want to, like sleeping in, whatever it is that's going to make you happy that you felt like you couldn't do while you had a job, do that. Yeah. A big thing for me, I've been unemployed three times, so (laughs) I'm pretty much a pro at this at this point. It does get easier. Um, But I think the biggest thing for me was like in the mornings, I would use that time to work and I would apply for jobs or I would take interviews. And then in the afternoons, I would use that to like enjoy my unemployment. So I would go to museums or when I was on the Cape with Kate, I'd go to the beach um, or I'd read a book in the hammock or like, you know, I'd go for a walk and just kind of enjoy that free time because when you're working, you do not get that free time. And I am nostalgic for all of the times that I've been unemployed because I'm like, man, I had so much fun just like living my life (laughs) yeah and again I am I am grateful that I have had the means to be able to do so yeah but I think also too like I had given myself a window where I was like okay if I don't find a job by this date I'm going to go work at a coffee shop or I'm going to start nannying like I just need to have some income Mm -hmm. um that's gonna you know cover my basic cost of living and so I think that that's important where like if you're having trouble finding a job, like set a date for yourself where you're like, okay, Mm -hmm. I got to start, I got to get my ass into shape here and I got to, you know, start bringing in money. But if you have the means and you have, you know, unemployment is, is coming in and giving you some extra funds, like don't be stressed the whole time because trust yourself that you'll figure it out. Yeah. Logistically, if you get laid off, first thing to do is look up unemployment near you and apply for that. Um, Second thing is figure out what your healthcare coverage is. Like take a good look at your separation agreement Agreement, with your company and figure out what they're covering, what they're not covering, when your health insurance expires, et cetera, and then figure out your options because there are always multiple options as it comes to health insurance, whether that's like Cobra, which can be really expensive, 
or like a local health insurance. Um, Nicole was great and actually pointed me to Massachusetts Health Connector when I was living in Massachusetts and was unemployed. Uh, and I ended up getting health insurance for free. And it was really good health insurance. And my prescriptions were free. I could go to the doctor for free. Um, and it was really great. So I think there's like local versions of that in a lot of states. So look yeah. for those. But like those are like main things. If you get unemployed, do that and like have someone you trust also look through your separation agreement um to make sure like you are clear on like what's happening yeah so all right we got a lot a lot a lot of questions about making friends as you get older so people were saying making friends post-grad making friends in a new city making friends after a breakup and I think that a lot of people find that to be really scary as you get older. And it is definitely, I think, harder. Like it's just so many people have just had the same friends for so long Mm -hmm. that it can be really hard to kind of put yourself out there again and find a new group of people that are willing to like bring you in. I've had a lot of really good luck making friends in my older years. I don't know how to say that (laughs) through work. Like, I've just been really lucky to work at places that had really great people. Like, I had two tables at my wedding Mm -hmm. that were just work friends, which I feel really lucky about. I always say the biggest thing is everyone is looking for friends. Someone has to make the first move. It's similar to dating. You have – you build friendships in a similar way that you do for dating – you kind of flirt back and forth. Do we have a little bit of the same interest? Do we like the same things? Oh my God, we do. Okay, maybe we go grab a coffee and we chat a little bit more about that. Okay, mm-hmm. the coffee went really well. Maybe maybe we grab dinner. Um, okay, also they like to watch The Bachelor. I should invite them over to watch The Bachelor with me. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like all of these little baby steps. Yeah. Um, but similar to dating people are scared to make the first move because they're afraid of rejection everyone is looking for connection yeah guarantee and so someone will take your bid for connection and if they don't then you don't you wouldn't want to be with friends with that person anyway so that exchange wasn't going to happen regardless so it's fine yeah they weren't the person for you there's certainly someone next door so don't be afraid Mm -hmm. of that rejection people want to be friends and also shameless plug the tg1 of discord is a Mm -hmm. phenomenal place for people to meet friends okay we have seen people go to each other's weddings they've started traveling internationally together they you know they meet each other's babies and these are people who really didn't know each other before they joined the discord yeah so I highly recommend if you're moving to a new city, join the Discord, reach out. Everyone in there is so friendly, so welcoming, and just be yourself and don't be afraid to show who you really are. Everyone, Everyone wants that. Yeah. And and I think this is like classic advice. If you're especially if you're moving somewhere new, join things that you're interested in sports rec league sports go to, to try a new boutique fitness studio that has small classes and start going to the same one every day so you start meeting people that go to that same one that's i've met a lot of people that way if you want to do adult ballet or something like i did that this year and i met so many people and i loved it and it was like very scary for me at first because i was like oh my god i haven't done ballet in so long what if i'm like horrible now who knows? And it was like the most lovely experience of all time. So just do things that are exciting to you that will make you happy. And you'll find the people that have the same interests as you. Yeah. It's the same advice for dating, right? They always say, well, if you want to meet someone in the wild, go to places that you like to go to. Because you're going to meet people there who like the same things as you do. Mm -hmm. You love coffee, you know, go hang out in a coffee shop. You're likely to meet partner or a friend in the coffee shop because they probably like those same things too. So yeah, it's tough. I'm not, I'm not denying that, but there are many, many wonderful people out there who want to be your friend. We got a couple breakup questions. This one makes me really sad. (laughs) How do you manage friend breakups and grief when someone chooses to leave? And I think friend breakups are arguably sometimes harder than romantic breakups because I don't even know why, but it just like, it feels so much 
more personal for me because it's right when you think of romantic love it's almost conditional right they always say oh you should love your partner unconditionally but like yeah at the end of the day there is some sort of exchange you like each other enough to stick around yeah. when it comes to friendships sure there should be like a, an appropriate amount of like giving and receiving in a two-way street right mm-hmm. but like those people should love you unconditionally and they should be there for you and that feels like a personal attack that they've chosen to leave yeah you as a friend because yes. you're like well what what was i doing wrong i thought yeah. we had a good thing going you know yeah. I do think sometimes though, like, there is a time to be the initiator. And yeah. I think sometimes friendships do run their course. And I think, I think that every single relationship you have in your life is for a reason. Like you're mm-hmm. supposed to know the people that you know. And people say this about relationships too. Like you learn something about yourself. You learn something about other people. And I think there are some friends that are in your life at a time that you really need them and you need what they bring to your life. And sometimes that can like naturally fade away. Um, I think it's very different if you have to like consciously end a friendship. Yeah. I have only had to do that maybe twice in my life. And I think it's just, you have to take an assessment of, is this friendship serving me anymore? And do I feel like, cause your friends are the people that you are choosing to surround yourself with. Right. Do they bring out the best in you? Do I feel like my best self? Do I feel safe in this relationship? Do I feel comfortable being myself? Do I feel pressured to be a different way? Do I feel like I have to put on a show? Like your friendships should be like such a safe place for you to just be who you are and not feel like you have to like act a certain way. Yeah. And I think that there are some relationships that I've had in my life where I've had friends that I just didn't feel good about myself when I was around them. And I think some of that was on them and the way that they acted. But I do think also at some points, because it was when I was a little bit younger, some of that was on me on like self-confidence issues, but it wasn't a healthy relationship for me to have anymore because I was not feeling great about myself anymore. And it like was leading me down a bad path. And so I had to kind of consciously end it. We, it was never something where we talked about it. It just kind of like I made the conscious decision to step back. Yeah. Um, and I think it is really hard because like it's like any relationship, you're grieving the end of it. You're grieving the person that you knew in the relationship you had. But it's you just have to focus on the future and like figuring out first what was wrong and then trying to figure out how you can rectify it. Yeah. I don't really – I have never had like a sit-down Break up, friendship breakup. I, again, I think that friendships kind of run their course sometimes. And there are people who I don't talk to every day and I still consider them a very good friend, right? Mm-hmm. I don't see them very regularly, but I wish them nothing but the best, no ill will. It's just our friendships are not the same. And we're both, we've gone in separate yeah. directions and that's okay. I've just let things kind of fizzle and been like, we obviously don't have too many of the same interests anymore. Like, you do you. I'm just going to kind of slowly go do my own thing. Yeah. We'll just do a couple more specific mm-hmm. questions. Number one is, I like a guy that is eight years older than me and our personalities work really well together, but it's still eight years. Okay, Which Danny and Heidi. <laughs> and I would say, I don't know how old you are. If you are like 16 and this guy's eight years older than you, <laughs> that's a red flag. Yeah, a huge if red you flag. you are 30 and the guy's 38... I don't think that's – I think there is so much – Even if you're 21 and he's like 29, also probably a little bit of a red flag. Yes. I think the older you are, the better that is. Mm -hmm. Like like, I don't think that you should really be in a serious age gap relationship before you hit the age of like 26 when your full frontal cortex has developed. Like, yeah, your personalities mesh so well. Are you 21 and he's like 29 because he's still acting like he's a frat boy in college? Like red flag. Yeah. So I think I personally rule it'd be to wait until you are in like a very mature place and somewhere that you know who you are. And I think that comes from being on your own for a little bit, like not being in school, just like working, living your life, knowing who you are, and then choosing to be in a relationship like that yeah also it sounds like you might be questioning it a little bit so think about why think about why that's kind of coming up in your head and and kind of go with your gut on that 
Okay, I like this one. Going on a running date with a really hot guy and I can run well, but I also get super red. What should I wear to the date? I want to look pretty, but also sporty. (laughs) Okay, same. I get so red when I work out. I would make a joke about it at the beginning and be like, oh, I'm so excited for this. Like, fair warning, you're not going to recognize me when we finish this because my face gets so red. And then it's not like you're embarrassed when it happens, but like you've already kind of like made a joke out of it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just how like I would handle that. And you can also find some like nice sunscreens or like face lotions that have a little bit of green in them that can like tone down the redness if it's something that you're like really self-conscious about and don't want to happen. Yeah. And for what to wear, I'd say something that you're comfortable in. Like if you want to be sporty but cute, like maybe a fun set, like like a a matching top and bottom to go running in. Um, But don't like – be uncomfortable running because yeah. you want to look good. Yeah. Yeah, because that sounds terrible. Days if you're like really worried about it. <laughs> Someone said, I'm the only single girl in my group and nobody has time to hang out or do anything anymore. Do I keep persevering and giving people chances or do I find new friends? It's been six months. I think you still keep the friends, but you also find new ones that fit your current lifestyle. Agreed. I don't think that you should drop those people who are in relationships because – I think if you've been friends with them for a long time, you'll probably be sad. Like you should probably want to keep up with them. But I think it's really important to have a variety of situational friends in your life. Not everyone has to be your best friend. You should have friends who you can go on dinner dates with or friends who you can like meet in the park, friends who can come over and sit on the couch with you. Like I, you need a variety of types. And so it sounds like you just need to expand your friend pool to include some friends who are like the single girls who want to go out with you. Agreed. Someone said confidence for the girls built like a mini fridge. Y'all are always killing it. And I want that. (laughs) Uh, And then someone else also like body image wise said, um, learning to love my postpartum body got wrecked physically feeling not myself. And I think this, the key to confidence is that nobody has it 100%. And like, if you see people that seem super confident like crazy that you think that we give off this like super confident energy because I can (laughs) guarantee you that that's not the case um and I think everyone struggles in one way or another so it's just like be kind to yourself and know that you're you are the way that you are and like this is this is who you are find things that just make you happy and like my biggest thing that I found, and this goes into Nicole and I both deciding that we are mid-rise girls on jeans, is find things that fit you and make you feel good and don't feel like you're like, okay, everyone is wearing skinny, like low-rise jeans, so yeah. I would have to too. Or yeah. like, I, like, no, find something that looks good on you, that you feel good in, that makes you feel great because like it truly is like sometimes it's faking it till you make it. Like if you think people seem confident, it's their energy. You're not noticing their body or like what they look like. You are thinking they look amazing because they are acting like they know they look amazing. The best piece of advice I ever heard was that no one is thinking about you that much. Like no offense. Yeah. No offense. People don't care. People are in their heads about their own things. You are thinking about yourself way more than anyone else is thinking about you. Do you think about the strangers that you see on the street? You probably say, oh, that's a cute outfit or her hair looks really good. Or even if you see someone where you're like, "Mm, that haircut's probably not for her. You think about it in passing and you don't remember that. You don't think about it ever again. Exactly. So just like if you ever are having a moment where you're like, oh, I'm like really stressed about it. Just be like, I'm my worst critic. 100%. And if it's something that you are really struggling with there is nothing wrong with making small little changes I would say don't go into something being like I need to change the way I'm eating or the way I'm working out so I can lose weight and like look better yeah that's never the healthy way to do it just do something to be like I want to feel a little healthier I want to feel a little better what's going to make me feel better sometimes it's literally just like getting a new skincare routine and that's going to make you feel great And that will change your confidence. Maybe it's like trying something new with your hair. Great. It's finding people that look like you on the internet that you can be like, oh, I want to try that style of clothes. It's maybe finding a workout that you love. 
uh, going for walks, like doing a hot girl walk and being like, I'm a hot girl and I'm going for a walk. Like, I don't know. There's little things that you can do without being like, I'm changing myself. I think it's it's more about like, I love myself. And so I'm going to do something that shows myself that love. And it's okay to have bad days. Yes. Kate and I regularly text each other and we're like, I'm having a bad day. All the time. And yeah. you say, okay, get it off your chest. And then you move on. Because you move on. You got to live another day. Yeah. It's it's tough and no one has it 100% of the time. Yes. We're almost, we're, we're getting to the end, I think. <laughs> Someone said, I'm bridesmaid one out of 15. I live abroad and it costs $2,000 to go for 72 hours. Can I say no? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes you can. That's the <laughs> final the, answer. You don't even, yeah. Yes, Kate, no, no. Bride and me as a, current, a former bridesmaid. Best way to go to the Austin race for a decent value. We are newbies. General admission. Mm-hmm. General admission. General admission. You can try all different views of the track. It's like the best way to do it. Yeah. Uh, and then someone said, what F1 race should I go to for my honeymoon? When's your honeymoon? Like what time of year? Or are you planning it around – this because i'd say go to the coolest fucking one or the one that you've always wanted to Mm -hmm. go to like i would choose singapore Mm. i think that'd be so fun yeah or go to like a european race because then you can like bop around bop around and and make your honeymoon longer in like in europe you could go to australia and then hit up bali and thailand like every Mm -hmm. single other one of the drivers this year literally Good, good case to see one of them, maybe. <laughs> I'm so sorry if we did not get to your question. We will bank these for later. Or if we didn't get to your question, DM us your question again and say, I'm still looking for advice here. And we'll just DM you a response. Yeah. So this was so fun. Thank you guys for entrusting us with advice <laughs> to things happening in your life as we love two you guys so as much. two older sisters there's nothing we yeah. love more i just want you guys advice. to know that like we are your best friends we're your, older talk sisters, about, we're your best talk friends about making friends later in life we're your best friends and i hope that you feel like that as you listen to this podcast if you listen weekly like i hope that you know that we do not take these like inside jokes that we have with our listeners for granted. Like it is so fun for us when you guys DM us with jokes or things that you see, even someone asking a question being like, I'm built like a mini fridge. Like that was a joke (laughs) from our podcast literally a year ago. (laughs) And it's still funny to me. And it just like, it makes us happy when you guys um, enjoy them just as much. Uh, so I hope you know how much we love you and how much we care about this community and like I mean, we get to do stuff like this. We started this community to make friends and now <laughs> so that's another piece of advice. Hey, start a podcast, start a community. <laughs> You'll make lots of friends. Exactly. Also, as you guys have seen, if you're watching this on YouTube, we have literally gone from bright daylight to nighttime <laughs> in the room that I'm in. So time it's to go. Time to wrap it up. Uh, We're not going to do a specific manifest minute this week because I think that we just manifested a lot of good things for you guys throughout that advice section. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for listening. Always reach out if you have questions or need advice. We love to talk to you. So we love it. But until next time, until next time, we'll see you on the internet. internet. Bye. Bye.